This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus 39, verse 30 to 43. They made the plate, the sacred emblem, out of pure gold, and engraved on it, like an inscription on a seal, Holy to the Lord. Then they fastened a blue cord to it, to attach it to the turban, as the Lord commanded Moses. So all the work on the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was completed. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, frames, crossbars, posts and bases, the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of another durable leather, and the shielding curtain, the Ark of the Covenant Law, with its poles and the atonement cover, the table with all its articles, and the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstand with its row of lamps and all its accessories, and the oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, and the curtain for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ropes and tent pegs for the courtyard, all the furnishings for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when serving as priests. The Israelites had done all the work, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus 39, verse 30 to 43.
What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Hello, 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 my cherished listener. You are welcome back to your favorite program, You Decide. My seasoned panelists will just bear out the facts. Today with me is... Nyan Titego. Pastor Hiwai Brent Cooker. And as usual, I am your host, Thomas Isaac. And we were talking about Israel in exile and a lot of controversy over the weeks came with who the Israelites are now, where they are now, and where they are going to be in the near or distant future. And that is why, if you heard one of my panelists making a lot of expansions on the point, Nia Itetego, it's your turn. Yes, oh. come in with your summary and your your points. Okay. I want to give a real battle, <laughs> if yes. I put it, yes. to what Pastor just said. Yes. And I want to begin with Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Um, I'm using the contemporary English version. Okay. And the Bible says that while the apostles were still with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, are you now going to give Israel its own king? Jesus said to them, you don't need to know the time of those events that only the Father controls. This statement or this question makes it clear that the disciples of Christ and the Israelites of his time were expecting Israel to be restored. As of that time, Israel was not independent. They were being ruled by the Romans. And the people of Christ's time were expecting that Israel would be restored as has been prophesied by the prophets. And Jesus' disciples believed so much that he was the Messiah who was going to bring about this restoration, this physical restoration. Okay. We text did you read earlier? Acts, Acts chapter 1, six. verse 6. Verse six. Okay. Yeah, they on. were expecting a physical restoration of Israel, a Messiah that God was going to send to restore Israel physically. And Jesus was telling them that it wasn't theirs to know the time. Now, in... Acts chapter 1 verse 12, you see Jesus have, uh, ascending from their sight. They were gazing into the clouds. And then these two angels appeared and told them that ye men of Galilee, the same Jesus you see going, shall the same way come down. And this was on the Mount of Olives. Right. Now, this was just a background. Now, I want to use the same text that pastor used and then make some clarifications according to my understanding of the word of God. Now, Pastor used Isaiah chapter 11, and he started from verse 1 thereabout. I want to also continue from the areas that he had an issue with, and that's um, Isaiah chapter 11, from verse 11 going. He says that when that day comes, this is how it begins, it. when that day comes, what day are we talking about? It's talking about the day that The disciples were asking Christ when he was going to restore. And Christ said that it is not for you to know of that day when, I mean, the Father have, you know. How do you know for sure that that is actual? Because it's not in the same text. This is in Isaiah. And the question was asked in uh, Acts. Exactly. How sure are you that it is? But it is for for such prophetic sayings Mm -hmm. that um, it was based on such prophetic sayings that the disciples were aware of that they asked Christ that question. Okay. And and Isaiah is saying that when that day comes, the Lord will again reach out his mighty arm and bring home 
his people who have survived in Assyria, Egypt, Patros, Ethiopia, Elam, Shina, Hamad, and the land along the coast. And every scholar of the Bible should go search for the present name, the names of these places. Okay. And if you have an idea of history, you will know that the remnants can be found among such, I mean, also in these areas. Okay. After all, we know they are scattered all over the earth. Now, verse 12 says, He will give a signal to the nations and he will bring together the refugees from Judah and Israel who have been scattered all over the earth. Israel will stop being jealous of Judah and Judah will no longer be an enemy of Israel. Instead, they will get together and attack the Philistines in the west. These are not stories. These are in the word of God. Mm-hmm. We are reading from the word of God. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and uh, you, they will attack the Philistines. This certainly can't be in heaven. And this certainly, the Philistines are not going to be there during the, uh, um, the, 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 the new heaven that is going to come down after the millennial reign. When you go to verse 15, it says that the Lord will also dry up the arm of the Red Sea near, near, near Egypt, and he will send a scorching wind to divide the Euphrates River into seven streams that anyone can step across. Then for his people who survive, there will be a good road from Assyria, just as there was a good road for their ancestors when they left Egypt. The Euphrates is going to be dried up just to make way for God's people who are scattered all over the earth to be able to have access to the land. And when you talk to researchers at the moment, the Euphrates, the river Euphrates is drying up as we are talking now. The level of that river keeps diminishing and diminishing and diminishing. Okay. It is a reality that is happening. Okay. Prophecy being fulfilled. So, do you mean to say all this will happen in the certainly, near future? Certainly. Is it when Jesus comes or before? Some of these events, for instance, like I'm talking about the Euphrates Drying diminished. Up. Exactly. There are certain things that are going to happen before he yes. actually lands. Yes. All but right. we need to have an idea that these things are all going to happen. Now, I want to go to Zachariah 14 as pastor when the. And then I will read from verse um, 1. It says that the Lord will have his day. It's still talking about that day because Christ is going to come on a single day. Wow. And he says that the Lord will have his day. When he, it comes, everything that was ever taken from Jerusalem will be returned and divided among its people. What do you need earthly things here for to go and share in heaven? Mm-hmm. We are talking about physical earth. When the Lord returns, when you read Zechariah 14, verse 5, then he said, Then you people who escape from the Lord's mountain through the valley, which reaches to Azal, you will run in all directions, just as everyone did when the earthquake struck in the time of King Uzziah of Judah. Afterwards, the Lord my God will appear with his holy angels. It will be a bright day that won't turn cloudy. And the Lord has decided when it will happen. This time of unending day, in both summer and winter, life-giving streams will flow from Jerusalem, half of them to the Dead Sea in the east, and half to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. We don't have the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean Sea in heaven. They are here on earth. Verse 14, he says that, Then there will be only one Lord who rules as king, and whose name is worshipped Everywhere in the earth. Mm -hmm. When you read verse um, 14 of Zechariah 14, it says that finally everything of value in the surrounding nations will be collected and brought to Jerusalem. Gold, silver, and piles of clothing. Um, um, Verse 16 says, Afterwards, the survivors from those nations that attacked Jerusalem will go there each year to worship the king, the Lord all-powerful, and to celebrate the festival of shelters. No rain will fall on the land of anyone in any country who refuses to go to Jerusalem to worship the king and the Lord all-powerful. Let me take it again. Zechariah fourteen seventeen is that no rain will fall on the land of anyone in any country who refuses to go to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord all powerful. This horrible disaster will strike the Egyptians and everyone else who refuses to go there for the celebrations. 
I just want to summarize and say that it is high time that we allowed the Bible to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes we hold on to certain doctrines that make us force to explain. Exactly, exactly. So are you trying to say that these nations that are going to come from places to worship God, the Almighty, and all stuff, will all happen on this earth? Yes. When will that happen? Is it after Jesus has descended with the new Jerusalem and sin has been destroyed? We'll still have all these places, or it will be before. This is going to be during the millennial reign. If you talk about sin and death and all those things, you should know that death is going to be the last enemy that is going to be destroyed. Destroyed. And you realize when you read um, Revelations, I think, 20, you Mm -hmm. get to know that um, um, it it is just after death has been destroyed and and, and, and hell also has been cast, death and hell have been cast into the lake of fire and Satan himself has, has been cast into the lake of fire and those sin them have been judged and whose name are not in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's that the new heaven is going to come. Interesting. So there is so much that is going to take place on this earth Within during the millennial reign. Thousand years. Yes. You see, this is gradually taking us to a different place now. We have agreed on everything, almost everything, about Israel in exile. The disagreement or diversity comes now at this point where we have the thousand years. That's a picture I am getting now. That is where we need to understand whether the thousand years, uh the millennial reign will be on earth earth or in in heaven. heaven. We would attempt to tackle that until then. In matters of faith, you decide. It was nothing but the truth. Only truth comes from you. It was nothing but the truth. And it's all that you can do. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana. From the moment I heard about the Lord and His word, well, it seemed to me too good to be true. There were questions and doubts, I tried to figure it out, but the best that I could do. Was to wander around in the form that I found to My questions started answering themselves Singing, can he, could he, would he, yes he can he, could he, would he did Well, can he, can he save me, could he, could he love me, would he, would he take me, did he, did he really Can he, could he, would he, yes he can he, could he, would he did Oh, oh can he can save me? Could he? Could he love me? Would he? Would he take me? Did he? Did he really? Can he? Could he? Would he? Yes, he can. He could he? Would he? Did Say you don't know what's necessarily so like somebody said it once in a song. You can think what you choose, but let me tell you the news. The Lord has loved you all along. So if you're asking again, will the doubts never end? Simply trust him and you'll see for yourself. Singing, can he, could he, would he, yes, he can he, could he, would he, did. Can he, can he say, could he, could he love me, would he, would he, he He's waiting and watching, watching for you. Hello and welcome once again to Moment of Truth. My name is Apia Solomon. This day I also want to share with you another interesting 
lesson that comes from the Bible. I want us to draw some lessons for our lives here in the book of Hebrews. But before we do that, shall we pray? Father, thank you that today you can help us to study about faith, what faith really means. We pray that grant us understanding. Holy Spirit, come and take control in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, the Bible depicts a lot of issues about faith. The book of Hebrews is a profound one that talks a lot about faith. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews begins by defining faith. Verse 1 says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 continues to say that for by it the elders obtained good report. If scripture is saying that faith is the substance of things that you have not seen, but because of an element that is motivating inside of you, it is making you hope for it, to look forward for it, to envision it, even though it may be in the future, it is by it, the Bible continues to say in verse 2, that it is by this element that is called faith that the elders obtained good report. You may ask yourself, what is good report? A good report is to be acclaimed something that is envious, an attribute that people would want to covet. The book of Hebrew chapter 11 outlines some of the great men and women of faith in times past. Some of the great men and women who stood for their faith. But today, I want us to look at just one of these characters that the book of Hebrews identified with faith and look at how we can take lessons from this element of faith in our Christian life. I want to read from chapter 11 of Hebrews, verses 23 and 24. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. Notice the words, proper, faith, and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Verse 24 says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25 continues to say, Chosen rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. What is faith? Even as we contemplate the subject of faith, I want to draw our attention to what faith means here for Moses. Moses looked beyond the pleasures of today. He looked beyond the pleasures of staying in the house of the king of Egypt, to enjoy all the riches, to enjoy all the wealth, to enjoy all the royalties that he came across. Don't forget that at birth, Moses' parents were subject to a commandment, a decree from Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, that every male-born child should be killed because the parents had faith and they knew that there was the need to obey the God which they served they decided by faith not to obey the king's commandment. Sometimes in our lives, our faith might make us seem to flout authority. But beloved, I want to tell you, I want to assure you that each time our faith comes into direct contact and into direct opposition with things that are worldly, powers and authorities that are worldly, that are not scriptural, that are not inspired by God, we need to, like Moses, stand by our faith. We need to, like the parents of Moses, stand by our faith. That we may have good reports, like verse 2 of the book of Hebrews chapter 11 tells us. In order that we can have that very good report, then we must stand like Moses. So that in spite of all the pleasures that we can be able to enjoy in our workplaces, in our homes, in our families... Because of faith that we are standing for, we shall choose rather to obey our God. We shall choose rather to go by the dictates and the commandments of our God. We choose every moment rather to obey the will of God than to do other things. It is because of this that we can today refer back to Moses that he was a great leader. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself 
declared that there was no other greater prophet than Moses. This is a good report. If you wish to get such a good report, then you need to stand by your faith. And standing by your faith means that sometimes you are going to come into opposition. But when you come to opposition, know that the Lord is with you. Before I go, I want us to share another word of prayer. Father, thank you that we can share lessons from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We pray that grant us firmness in our faith. Let us be able to stand by faith according to all that you have written, that we shall please you. We thank you for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu dot edu dot gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>